Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Wednesday morning mountain weather update. I want to go to radar first out of the Pacific Northwest, and this is our atmospheric river surge, copious amounts of moisture up and down the West Coast from parts of BC down through the Cascades, the high volcanoes, and look at that flow into Northern California, extreme central and Northern California. Um, there it is. I mean, let me take you a little bit closer. I mean, just like a fire hose just aimed right at this area, and it's really right on the cusp of Tahoe. I'm not expecting much in Tahoe. It now looks like it's going to stay just barely north of Tahoe with this first batch. You're probably going to have to wait um, until the 22nd to really get significant moisture into the Tahoe area. But it's just nailing Shasta, a lot of the northern parts of California, even southern Oregon, um, in on this action. So again, this is the leading edge of our atmospheric river setup and also the first storm system. And here it is, you can see the spin. Talked about this yesterday. This is a bomb cyclone because the pressure is dropping fast enough. And look at the spin on this thing. Um, so it's essentially just a low pressure right here with extremely high winds across a lot of the Pacific Northwest uh, and heavy precip running all the way through the high terrain of the West Coast. And you know, 110, 115 mile an hour wind gusts over Shasta. That's my expectation with this thing. So it's got a lot of wind energy. We're lifting the air up or lifting the fire hose up over the top and just squeezing out all that snowfall um, over parts of uh, the higher terrain features. And eventually what will happen is additional areas of low pressure will rotate in and carry this. There'll be blow off and overrun into Idaho, Montana, eventually Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado down the road. So that is all yet to come. And here's the latest uh, atmospheric river forecast. So this is integrated vapor transport. We're looking at moisture in the atmosphere. Still, looked at, still looking at about a moderate intensity, entry level strong um, between today and the 23rd for a lot of the West Coast. And this is specifically for that San Francisco uh, Bay District all the way up to the, uh, the Sierra. Um, but again, you're going to have to wait a couple of days in the Tahoe area. And certainly that's the case in Mammoth before you get the big snow in those areas. All right, so here is my snow timeline. Best odds of snow, Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, and Interior, BC. And here's what I'm talking about. So only light snow accumulation around Tahoe late today into tomorrow. Then the heavy batches come in after that. So afternoon 11, 22, into 23, heavy snow accumulation. Heavy again, 24 and 25 across Tahoe. In Colorado, it's really just one shot. It's uh, the afternoon of 24, 25, and the 26 for heavy snow accumulation. In the Wasatch, you might see some light accumulations afternoon 23, but better, your best shot of the period is on the 24th for heavy snow accumulation across the Wasatch. Light 25, moderate on 29. In fact, let's just take a more detailed look at that. Here's the forecast mediagram for Alta Ski Area. Um, and this is at about 9,000 feet. So there's today, the 20th, there's tomorrow, 21st, 22nd, 23rd. Bone dry on this. And there, I've got some light snowfall possible on the 23rd. Not showing up here, but I've got it in my forecast. And what you don't see is on the 24th. That's the best shot coming out on the 24th for heavy snow accumulation. Temps at about 9,000 today. Max out about 31, 37 tomorrow. 39 to 40 on Friday, and then the numbers will start to come down as we work our way um, across the weekend into early next week. Okay, let's go back, and I want to show you Colorado. So this is snowmass ski area, totally dry forecast. Again, your key time frame in Colorado is not until the afternoon of the 24th and the 25th and 26th. So this is a forecast for all the vertical layers of the atmosphere and uh, for humidity for the next 72 hours, the yellows and the oranges, dry air, encapsulating the high peaks. There's a little bit of moisture high up near the jet, but that's about it on the time height forecast. So let's look at the forecast um, jet stream. So this is close of business today. You can see the big trough anchoring the jet and, and really just piling up that moisture across the West Coast. That's at 11 o'clock, 11.30 tonight. And there's tomorrow, pretty much the same. There's 22, next storm system rotates in. You can see the jet now starting to move down to the south. This is where Tahoe and Mammoth start to get in on the equation, finally, because the whole thing shifts to the south. Still looking at great blow off precip up through a lot of Idaho and parts of interior BC, northwest Montana. 
Um, here we go on Saturday, close of business. Now we start to see some of the, the translation. Some of the moisture starts to get moved towards the interior, starts to take an aim at the Wasatch eventually here and towards the, uh, the Tetons. And then, boom, right here, you can see the jet streak and everything's starting to be carried a little further into Colorado now across the western slope through the 25th and even into the 26th. And then there's another storm system approaching the west coast here on the 28th, and that rolls into the interior through the 29th. So the pattern stays pretty active all the way through the end, all the way through Thanksgiving and the end of uh, the month. Okay, let's look at the forecast uh, radar and satellite here. So by 5.30 this afternoon, there's your setup. Again, Tahoe right on the line, just expecting light snow accumulation. Uh, here we are on 21st, uh, the 21st in the afternoon. Uh, there's your next storm system coming into the, uh, the Pacific Northwest and West Coast on the 22nd, reloading the atmosphere. And there it is. Tahoe down to Mammoth is in on the action late on the 22nd into the 23rd. Heavy snow getting blown up into parts of Idaho, Northwest Montana, and BC. Uh, here we are late on the 23rd. Now, on the 24th, look at the diagonal of snow. The jet's starting to stretch that out and create some lift over the top of the Wasatch, the Hyuintas, the Tetons, and eventually watch it take aim at Colorado across the western slope right there into the 24th and 25th. That's when we're going to pick up a lot of our accumulation in Colorado and also up in the Wasatch and the Hyuintas. Um, but also, I think the heaviest snow in Colorado, and I'll show you the numbers, are going to be in the central and northern mountain zones with less accumulation in southern Colorado. All right, here we are on 25. There it is on 26, continuing. Here comes 27. Next storm system hits the west coast, 28. And there it is, 28, 29, getting ready to move into the interior through the 29th and, and beyond. Here are my numbers. So uh, all of today through tomorrow, the big stuff is right on the cusp of Tahoe. A lot of that, that 10 that you see in Tahoe comes like late tomorrow. Um, you'll have some light accumulation tonight, tomorrow, but more of it comes tomorrow night and into the, the 22nd. Um, but Shasta's right in the line for the fire hose and the, and the bullseye, so is Mount Ashland, um, and, and some good overrun into parts of Sun Valley and also Schweitzer, and, and good numbers up into parts of uh, BC. Okay, now here's the, uh, the active period. Um, this is 1122 through 1129. You can see how the emphasis in the Sierra shifts away from Shasta and down towards Tahoe and also Mammoth with about three feet of accumulation in those areas. Um, over the top of the Wasatch, again, the 24th is really the key time frame and thinking probably anywhere from eight to 16 inches for most of Powder Mountain and Park City, Deer Valley, Snow Basin, potentially 10 to 20, potentially 10 to 20 across Solitude, Brighton, Alta, and Snowbird, a little bit down in Southern Utah. The big numbers in Colorado across uh, the central to northern mountain zones, one to two feet, including Aspen snow mass and certainly Crested Butte with this type of wind direction. At about a foot up on the Continental Divide running down into Summit County and less snow accumulation in southern Colorado. Um, looking at about a foot up there over the top of the Tetons, big sky, northwest Montana, big numbers in Idaho with just continuous overrun, one to two feet there for sure. Um, good numbers through BC, one to two feet. Interior BC, 10 to 20 inches. So awesome there. Love seeing that. So guys, that's going to do it for this uh, morning mountain weather update. First atmospheric river setup is basically here and continues through the 23rd with big numbers through a lot of the ranges across the West. Take care and have a great day.